Hey, what's up, Derek Kirk and Victor and today we're talking about D5 Render. With D5 Render, I can fly. D5 Render. Real time path tracing. Goodbye. Noise sampling. Finally, my tools aren't out. One thing I do want to mention is that you can go download D5 right now for free. It just has some limitations on it. You don't get access to all the pro features and stuff. But if you want to try it out yourself, please link below, download it. D5 Render was nice enough to sponsor this video. They gave me D5 Render Pro for a month to test it out. So before we continue in this project, it was just, I've recorded this tutorial so many times because they're just, there's so much I want to talk about because it's way more than I thought. I thought it was like a twin motion clone kind of a thing, but it is way more than that. And yeah, um, the AI tools that are built into it are fantastic. The live sync that it does with C4E and Blender and all those things, also fantastic. Like somehow it's actually able to be faster than Redshift at its lowest settings. Even though it's not even built into the program, it actually responds faster than Redshift does, which is amazing. Uh, and then it has just so many good tools to create these really cool things. And on top of that, if you don't know, it's an alpha testing, but it is available. It has the real time path tracer, which just elevates everything to the next level. But I thought that was going to be the star of the show. But I think the star of the show is honestly the AI tools that are built into it. And we'll cover it. So I did all kinds of tests and things with this. And obviously D5 is, you know, most well known for its ArcViz stuff. But they're adding a lot of new tools in here that I think bring it into the product render world. And you can bring in your own materials, your own objects, all this stuff, just like you can with any other software. And uh, but the the live scene transfer and everything is really cool. But the way that you light things in real time, like you can see how your light is affecting it while you're moving your light around, is fantastic. On that, so uh, yes, it it's there are similarities to it and Lumen uh, and Twin Motion and stuff like that, but. It, it is its own beast. I thought this was going to be a very easy cut and dry video where I say this is what it does, blah, blah, blah. Turns out I recorded like four hours of stuff because I just keep finding things I want to talk about and uh, how to do it. So let's just real quick, let me just show you. Like this is what I made super, super fast. I just brought in a mech from Kitbash, quickly scattered in some trees and clouds and things very quickly because it's incredibly easy to do. Set up my lighting and stuff and then rendered that out. And then there's the AI enhance tool, which is this. And I show, I just, I will show you how to turn it into this or this or this <laughs> or this, which is awesome. And then how to take it into Photoshop and, and, you know, add the depth of field and stuff back in as well. So yeah, inside of Photoshop, this is like our final render and you know, this is the thing, like, <laughs> I can't get this staying inside of C40 and Redshift. Um, like, obviously, the, the depth of field and stuff I did in, in Photoshop very quickly. I guess uh, before we dive into just an overview of some of the best features of it and how easy it is to use, what I've found when using this is that I don't have to leave D5. Um, I've When you're working in C40 and Redshift, like, and, and the best part is, is, like, because of the live sync and because of the D5 uh, conversion tool, you can just work in the programs you like to work in when you're just creating and modeling. And then when you're ready to get to that, I'm ready to, to light and render and stuff workflow, swap over to D5 like that. Like it, it is very fast. It works perfectly. And some of the Redshift materials uh, have some issues coming in. The complex ones, they're aware of it. They are fixing it. It's like ones that are like a lot of procedural layers layered together. But anything that's like PBR based or whatever is going to work fine. Substance materials are not supported yet, uh, which is a bummer. But there are a lot of like 14,000 plus models, assets and things in here. Also, D5 can make materials from an image just with the AI tool built into it. Also, it can take things that aren't seamless and make them seamless textures, which is awesome. Uh, all within the program itself. And then on top of that, we can do all these cool AI style transfers and things. And I'll show you my tip on how to keep your scene almost identical but just elevate it with this nice it's just nice i like that cool uh but yeah so we'll cover a lot of that but but really i wanted to just kind of like 
if you look through their website, you'll see that it's full of ArcViz and stuff. And that's very obvious like the power of that and the power of the path tracing of the light bounces and stuff and being able to work with your lighting in real time is fantastic. Cause like in Redshift, you bring in a light, it goes boop, and then you move it around and then you kind of wait to see how it's reacting. And this, before you even place your light, you see where it's working. So it's like turning on a flashlight, like turning on a light in the studio and like, okay, where do I want this to be? And you see it in real time. Like it's crazy how fast it is. So I think this software has the potential to really have a good place in your workflow, whether it's motion graphics and stuff or whatever. And the main thing like is like a nice showcase uh, if you're doing something inside of c4d and you want to be able to use all c4d's like modeling tools like the deformer the bin tool all that stuff you still can work with all of that and then you just need to kind of bake it down to a final object like just connect right click connect object and delete and then it'll just transfer over and you'll keep all that so you can stay in your familiar without having to restart learning a new program and like how do i model that inside of here how do i do this inside of that uh you don't have to you can stay in your comfort zone and then switch over just to do the, the lighting and stuff and adding like the environment or the sky or whatever you want to do and use the benefits of the path tracer um, with literally the easiest render settings possible. Uh, it's three things and just ma you just max them out is all you do. And it's super easy to use. Uh, and so, so I had fun making a couple different renders and things like normally uh, I think a lot of people do ArcViz stuff, but obviously I want, I don't do that. Uh, cause I used to have to do that for my job back when I first learned 3d, uh, and it was never something I wanted to do. I don't enjoy arc viz. Uh, so obviously I do enjoy sci-fi and stuff like that. So yeah. And so you can bring in things from blender C40, uh, just FBX is whatever inside here. You can use the asset browser, which is full of stuff. Uh, it's super easy to scatter things across materials and, or, uh, your, feel like that was one click to add this entire forest into my mountain. It's a PCG forest setup built in. It just has all of these streamlined tools that I didn't think it had. I thought it was going to be mainly just about um, just the path tracing and like, oh, the light bounces around nicely, which it does. But beyond that, it has a lot of really cool features, tools, animations, camera moves, uh, the ability to animate keyframe, do video edits and everything inside of here. Uh, just like you would expect from any other software, a render engine. Um, the cool thing is it's it's more than a render engine. It's like slightly priced more than a render engine, Redshift or Octane on its own. But that's because you can use it on its own. You don't even have to use anything else if you don't want to. And you can just download models and bring them in and make cool stuff. Um, and obviously, if there's something like from Kitbash or whatever, it's not going to be a direct import into this. But you could use Blender for free and export it out out of that with the live link, easy peasy. Um, but yeah, so you can work with what you're familiar with and stay in here. One thing I do want to mention is that you can go download D5 right now for free. It just has some limitations on it. You don't get access to all the pro features and stuff, but if you want to try it out yourself, please link below, download it, um, and try it for yourself because it's kind of awesome. You can see how responsive the live link is, all this stuff, see how it fits into your workflow before buying it, which like it's a testament to how well it works. Uh, that it's like, here, yeah, go ahead, try it because we know you'll like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's pretty amazing how well it works and stuff. And uh, I'm pretty excited to have gotten, again, thank you to D5 Renner for this, for sponsoring this video. But let me know in the comments below what you want to see from D5 because it's a lot and uh, it's kind of awesome. But yeah. Yeah, let me know, like, okay, uh, let me see, like, do you want to know, like, product shots, whatever, like, if you bring them in, do whatever, like, how well does that enhance, or how well does it handle glass, because, yes, it has caustics built in as well. Yeah, real-time caustics, which, of course, are kind of sparkly or whatever, but when you're in out the final image, they do look good, uh, and then stuff like that, it has all kinds of materials and things you can add in, drop in, whatever, replace, it's kind of amazing. Pretty much anything that I've wanted it to have, it has. Uh, which has been kind of surprising, um, but it does doesn't have um, you know the flexibility of like of like a C4D or a Blender or an Unreal Engine where it does like you know throw something in a cloner and make a million copies of it or whatever uh, and and adjust it in that kind of sense. Um, that's but it links to other things that do have that. So 
it doesn't need to have that. It needs what it needs. What I think they do a really good job of is focusing on its spot in the workflow, which is kind of after the base composition is set up, after the base like idea and premise and concept of the structure is set up. And now it's like, okay, okay, now I have this shot or now I have this object or this product or this building, whatever it is. Now I want it to be put in a world and lit and make look real. And that is where I think T5 comes in and does a great job. So I think it does what it's supposed to do extremely well, uh, which surprised me. I thought it was going to be a little lackluster, but I've been pleasantly surprised with how beefy it actually is uh, inside of itself. So yeah, that's kind of my first impressions of D5 was uh, that. And but let me know what you guys want to see more, and hopefully D five will uh, sponsor another video. We can get another video in, and do uh, even more stuff because I do want to play around with it even more because uh, I actually really enjoy it. Awesome. So like at this point, you might be wondering like, what's the difference between doing this and just generating an AI image? Well, the difference is is if I'm doing an AI image, I have to use prompts and stuff, which is fine, and you can figure that out and do style transfer. But it's all built within here. There's no credits, so I can do it as many times as I want, and uh, which is fantastic. And if I say, you know what, actually, I wish my mech was a little to the right. I don't have to leave the program. I just grab my mech, move it a little to the right, and maybe I rotate him. Or maybe I make him face in the other way. No. We, we rotate him like so, you know. And then we... Render and try again. So let's do let's do the just a 1080. Why is it a weird? What is this? 1920. The 1080. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna AI style transfer this to itself. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna leave all the settings default. I'm gonna say okay. And we're going to see what it does. So it's going to make it look more like itself, which is fun. I think that this is what I found is like the best way to get a good result <laughs> with like elevating your render. Uh, but we can also do things that are a little more um, interesting, like this brutalist scene that I created with AI uh, on Kriya as well. And we can make it say, okay, um, keep the structure matching, but then lower the style down like that. You can do multiple at once, which is nice. I do want to see what Voxel looks like. All right, let's turn this into Minecraft. That's actually amazing. That is pretty cool. I love that. I like that a lot more than I thought I was going to. Okay, let's take a look at the one. This is it. This is before, and this is the style transfer to itself. And so far, so good. We've lost the snow. We've got flowers. That's okay. Because you can't really tell the snow really before anyway, because we kind of didn't have the snowflakes on. All right. See that? It keeps the, the general shape of it. So much better. It's slightly different, right? It's like it's ever so slightly different enough, but it's awesome. And it looks good. And it filled in some of our patches here. We had nothing back here. And it's like, you know what? I think it needs some grass and stuff in here. And it made all the ground and everything look so much better. The trees look infinitely better. That's my, that's my secret tip for using the AI style transfer is tell it to look like itself. Uh, and you can do it again and again and again. You can take this one and tell it to look more like itself and like keep going. <laughs> it just like keeps doing it. It's interesting what you get. But yeah, so like this is, to me, this is like my favorite feature. Oh, okay, here we go. So this is the Brutalist one. We, we added the, uh, the foggy Brutalist scene. Yeah. You kind of put some buildings back here made this a mountain which is pretty cool like and it made these buildings up here instead of tree lines they're actually buildings we kept the structure right which is nice and it added some buildings back there it still says tank here which is cool like i actually kept the 
structure of our mech even better. Added rocks and things. And this again is like we built this. We laid this out. Like, yeah, it's AI enhanced, but we can still come in here and tweak the camera angle and do all that stuff and do it again. Um, I love this one and this one and that one. Oh, yes, but we can do things that are a little more interesting. Uh, so like we could take this one and then AI enhance it with something a little more dramatic. Like um, let's do, I had a scene, this like sci-fi moody landscape scene here. Boom. Just like that. And we'll say we'll lower the structure matching weight and increase the style transfer. And we'll see what that does. And I can sit here, like, I, I think I spent an hour doing this last night, just playing around with things. And I made all kinds of different things. But you can see, like, last night, I, I did the same sci-fi scene, and it turned my spaceship into a rock, which is really cool. But, like, look how cool this is. Going from this to this. Like, it's just, it's like art directing without having to learn prompts and crap, uh, which just makes sense. It's like working in a familiar tool uh, that's just, that's what I like about it. Like, this doesn't feel like an AI-generated image. This one maybe a little more than the other one. Like, this one doesn't feel like an AI-generated image because I told those trees to be there. I told that to be there. I told this mech to be here. I told my light to come down from this way. I told the cloud, the sky to be kind of like that. I told it to be foggy. So it's like, yeah, it's AI enhanced, but I built it quickly. And then I know that it could be enhanced. So, all right. So here's mech AI in Photoshop. And all we're going to do is go to filters. We go to neural filters and we scroll down and we turn on the blur feature depth blur boop, and we click our mech right here and we're going to instantly it's going to process that and now we have depth of field now that's too much we don't want it to be like a, a macro shot so you can just do it like that holy cow right and then we can add a haze if we want to add more haze in here i'm just going to haze that out even more but we don't really want that too much something like that we say okay and we come in here to the filters, we go to the camera raw filters and we use a preset to do something like futuristic or cinematic. We go to the presets here, we scroll down and we just take a look at some of these presets. Let's go down a bit more. But that depth of field is wild, right? Uh, very cool. Cinematic. Boom. Boom. Let's do like this one, but then lower the strength of it down like that. And we can come in here and I always like to add a little grain. I know it's silly, but it does help it. I know you work so hard to get no noise, but then you do add that in and it's nice. Uh, and then the exposure, we can adjust a little bit more if you want. Like so. And then again, the colors will make it slightly cooler i think it looks nice and slightly more vibrant okay and now we have a really nice render i couldn't get this out of c4d that's all i'm saying like redshift won't give me this like i could get something close and then i could go into an ai third party tool and try to um style transfer and, and then i'm burning through credits uh and that program but like this is like, and then if I want to change it, I got to go back into C40, re-render it out, do whatever. But in D5, I can just stay in D5 and do it all, which I think is fantastic. And you can do like a sky replace tool. You can like say, oh, fill in grass here, do this there with just like a pin. It's basically like generative fill. So it's like a, a wombo combo of all these tools collaborated together. Um, so I love that.